Imperial College in London released a COVID-19 report and that's where most of our U.S. leaders are getting the information they're basing their decision making on. I read through that report and here are my three big takeaways. First, the report begins by saying the public health threat of the virus is the most serious they've seen since the 1918 Spanish flu outbreak. It continues to cite that outbreak as a time when non-pharmaceutical interventions or NPIs were implemented, like bars closing and schools closing. Cities were more successful at reducing case numbers and experienced lower mortality overall. Secondly, the report runs us through a few different ways this could turn out depending on what our responses are. If we don't do anything to control this virus, over 80% of people in the U.S. would be infected over the course of the epidemic, with 2.2 million deaths from COVID-19. That 2.2 million deaths also doesn't account for the potential negative effects of health systems being overwhelmed. Again, in the situation that we do absolutely nothing to help stop the spread, the report predicts critical care bed capacity would be exceeded as early as the second week of April. The report goes on to cite a few different ways people can stop the spread. There's case isolation in the home, voluntary home quarantine, social distancing of those over 70, everyone's social distancing, and closures of schools and colleges. Obviously, a combination of all of these things is going to be the best option, short of a complete lockdown, which would prevent all people from working. Finally, once these interventions are relaxed, whenever that time comes, the infections will begin to rise and we're going to see our peak in this epidemic. The report wraps up by saying to avoid a rebound in transmission, policies need to be maintained until large amounts of a vaccine are available to the population. That could be in 18 months or more. And many people talking about that report today.